Thank you for the introduction. So I will be, um, I will be presenting my paper on research directions for skin disease education using image processing and machine learning. So skin diseases are a common issue. It is a problem regardless of your age, your gender, your race. It's a problem that's global. And um, while technology has been incorporated into areas like cancer recognition, there is still quite a lot of improvement to be made, um, progress to be made when it comes to skin diseases. This is the content. So, as I mentioned earlier, skin diseases, it is a, it is a common issue. And what happens is it eventually decreases the quality of the patient's life and it may lead to disabilities as well. So with um, advancements in AI, it offers an opportunity to actually assist medical officers and dermatologists to identify skin diseases. So AI techniques has been, in, has been explored recently, including image processing and machine learning. So the aim of my project, the aim of my paper is actually to help people that are going to take part in such research to get an overall idea of what has what progress has been made in the research. So according to WHO World Health Organization, around 30% to 70% of individuals around the world are affected with skin diseases. In Sri Lanka alone, according to research, that number is about 47% for semi-urban areas and 32% for urban areas. So researchers are still working on a system that can actually be reliable enough for to be a tool that can be used by dermatologists and other healthcare workers. So when it comes to skin disease identification, there are, main, there are mainly five steps that are taken by researchers. So first is image processing. I will be discussing these steps as we go on the presentation. So starting with image processing, when you consider a skin disease image, you need image processing to get rid of certain artifacts such as hair and also noise and blur that may actually affect the reliability or accuracy of such system. So for image restoration, image restoration. So the main purpose is to reduce the noise and blur. So spatial features are, um, spatial field filters are generally used. And so for uh, linear spatial features, filters. Um, so there are two main classes, low pass filters and the high pass filters. So low pass filters act to reduce noise and the high pass filters add to reduce blur. So that is done by enhancing the edges of the image. And when we consider image enhancement, that is to enhance the features so the classification will actually be more accurate. So when you have a skin image, there are certain features that actually contribute a lot more and that is why image enhancement is used to make sure that those features are en enhanced. So, so, image segmentation is needed to actually isolate the affected region. And there are quite a number of segmentation algorithms that have been used. Um, some of the main are grayscale segmentation, so that actually involves using a threshold to segment. Histogram-based segmentation is using groupings of pixels to actually determine what area is infected and what area is not. There is a color base as well, which uses the color as the name describes and so on. Coming on to feature extraction, so after segmenting the area of the skin lesion, feature extraction is needed to get the texture features, color features, and shape features. So those are actually, when you consider a skin disease image, those are features that actually help to identify, to actually distinguish between certain skin diseases. So for texture features, 
grade level covers, matrix, coal cards, matrices commonly used, and color moments, color histogram, symmetry, area and diameter, those are quite important when it comes to when it comes to skin diseases like cancer, skin cancer where the symmetry actually does matter. So moving on to machine learning. When we consider, so after extracting features, it's important to select the features that contribute most to determining what sort of skin disease it is. So filter methods and wrapper methods are actually, okay, so filter methods is actually a statistical method which assigns scores to certain features. And wrapper method, those are actually based with the, so those, so there are some nature-inspired algorithms that are used for feature selection. They actually take feature selection as a search problem. And when we consider embedded methods, those are, those are actually in built into the model and it's usually using machine learning al algorithms. So regulation, uh, regularization algorithms like Lasso and Elastic Nature are quite common. Moving on to classification, support vector machine has been quite a common model used, which uses hyperplane to discriminate between classes. And artificial neural networks that's inspired by the human brain, so it has also been used by researchers. Um, looking at the trend recently, convolutional neural networks are actually becoming quite common, but there are certain limitations which will be discussed later on, and ensemble is when we use all these sort of methods together. So this is just a comparison, just a summary about the performance. So we can see that SVM works well with classification when there is low data, and when the processing resources are lower. Artificial neural networks require larger data sets, and the processing time can be quite high, Convolutional neural networks, on the other hand, need much more, much large data sets and also processing resources. And Ensemble also has, so Ensemble is pretty much the merge of certain machine learning algorithms and so it kind of accumulates to give, so what, I have noticed, well, these are just a few points for discussion. So smoothing and contrast enhancements actually improves the segmentation of skin lesions when considering skin diseases. And watershed algorithm has been quite common for segmentation, but researchers are still looking for improved methods that can be used for segmentation. And texture, color, and shape features are usually considered for classification. And so the performance of systems can be improved by optimizing the features. And SPM, as I mentioned earlier, is more, it performs better for smaller data sets, CNN for better data sets. And another point is CNN doesn't, incom it doesn't require the image um, paper, sorry, it doesn't um, require external image feature extraction. So I have re reviewed the paper image preprocessing, segmentation, feature extraction, selection, and classification techniques. And there is still yet to be a reliable system to assist doctors and healthcare workers with identifying skin diseases. And there is still room for improvement and further research to be done. So I hope this paper will help people that embark on research related to skin disease identification. Thank you.
valuable and uh, it is relevant uh, review, uh, providing the basis for other researchers to uh, continue their research. Uh, so, in this, uh, uh, actually, we have ranked. suitability of different alternative methods. Uh, uh, well, there are the other, other methods, the meat processing methods, you, you image other than uh, artificial neural network based support. Well, so when thinking of image processing, okay, so when you consider artificial neural networks, um, for that, you need to provide the image features as the input. So, as I mentioned earlier, we um, generally researchers consider the texture, color, and shape features, and that is actually input as the um, as the that's actually input that's the input for artificial neural networks. But when you consider convolutional neural networks, the image processing part is actually taken care of. So the features are extracted by the convolutional neural networks itself. Yes, and also uh, there are so many different diseases. So yes. uh, how do you narrow down uh, uh, for identification because you can't have a very large uh, target? Yes, actually that's very common. When researchers are taking on this um, you know, re research is related to this field, what they do is they consider a few skin diseases, so maybe three, four, five. So they consider skin diseases that are quite common because then there is more um, data available, skin disease images available to cons conduct the research. But uh, so when considering support vector machines, the data set required is less. So that can be used for skin diseases that are quite rare. But when considering convolutional neural networks, first you can use that for common skin diseases where there are thousands of images that can be used as input. Okay, thank you very much. It's a very detailed and uh, very clear answer. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir.